Hi guys, this is Penny Santaveri and Paula Kraft from Author Marketing Experts, and today we're going to talk about um, Goodreads, how to become a power user, and Paula is our resident expert on Goodreads. Um, she's setting up, she sets up, sets up a lot of our Goodreads accounts, and Paula, um, thanks by the way for taking the time to, to do this with us. Um, my first question to you is, do you notice how glitchy not not necessarily glitchy, but tough to navigate Goodreads is. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Even yeah, after all this time, all this time I still feel that the site is not the most user friendly. So you do have to be willing to click around a little bit. I find that if I'm away from it for a couple of weeks, I have to reorient myself. Okay. I know too before I contact authors, sometimes I go back and check and make sure that what I'm telling them works exactly that way because it can be a little frustrating at first. Yeah, and just so you know, um, I heard this from Digital Book World that we're expecting Goodreads to go Goodreads 2.0 sometime middle of this year, which means that they, they know that they have to come, that they that they do need a revamp, that some of it's confusing, so authors should be should be looking for that too, but I suspect that kind of a revamp is going to then also increase the, the, the visibility of Goodreads generally. I mean, Goodreads gets a ton of traffic, does it not? It really does. It's now up to 25 million members, which is really pretty phenomenal. And granted, they're not all active, but still, that's a really huge number of book lovers congregating to one site. And there are just so many ways for book lovers to be active on the site that it really encourages people to check in daily and to be writing about their books, looking for more books to read, getting involved in the groups. So there's a lot that you can do on the site just as a fan. And I know for myself, just as a reader, I belong to the, the Tudor Book Lovers group, for instance, and we all read a book together and discuss it, and it just makes the experience of reading that much more fun. Right, exactly, exactly. Now, so, so before we dig into the profile, are there books that do better on Goodreads than others? Is there a particular genre that tends to do well there? I do think that, that fiction, fiction does best overall, and particularly, and particularly romance, thriller, romance, mystery, mystery. Those, those, those types of genres always, always do really well. I think because there are number ones for many readers of those genres, and those readers tend to be pretty prolific. They read their books quickly, so they're always looking for, they're always looking for new material. Right. Right, right, exactly. So take us through, okay, getting in there and setting up a profile. And for those of you who have a profile, um, you know, this is also kind of a good uh, revi to revisit it to make sure that you did it all correctly. So let's start start from the beginning. Okay, well, the first thing you want to do is just create a profile. And once you do that, you want to look your books up. You actually want to go to the search bar at the top of Goodreads, the top left. Type in the title of your book to see if it's already listed on the site. Then you can go to the listing, not only see what's there, but you can click on your name and let Goodreads know that you are the author of that book. And that's really important because you want to become a Goodreads author. So just so like just this like page we're looking at for Christina George, she is an official Goodreads author, and you can see that on the top right, and that allows her to take advantage of the promotional opportunities that Goodreads offers to authors. It's definitely worth the time. Okay. Okay, good. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I think you know, a lot of authors don't realize that book lovers are constantly adding books to their shelves. So whether or not you have an account doesn't matter. If your book is available, there's a chance that it's already on the site, and that's why I encourage authors to create their profile if they don't already have one, because you need the profile to get started. But then look up your book and look up your listing and claim the books that are yours, because Goodreads will see that, and they will help you get set up with an author account. You just send them a quick note saying, maybe this author, you would like to become a Goodreads author, and they'll take care of the rest. And then once you get that designation, they'll notify you, and you can get started on really creating an enhanced profile, like you'll see for Christina George. Okay. So what does it mean, because a lot of people ask me this, what does it mean when people have your book 
on their shelf. Does that mean that they are required to read it? Um, and I, and, I, and we can talk more about the engagement of that later. But what does distance? What does that mean? Typically, Typically people, people add books to their, books their shelves, shelves because they'd because like they to read them. them. I think I for think many book lovers, the challenge is finding the time to read all the books that they want to read. But from an author's perspective, it's great if you're on somebody's shelf, even if, if they have not read your book, because their friends are going to see that book. So your book is getting exposure. And so being on somebody's shelf on Goodreads is a really positive thing. OK. OK. So what, what all should be on the Goodreads author profile? You really you want to put as much, much content on there as you can. As you can. In the Goodreads author box up top, you'll see there's a link for the website. You can actually add your Twitter feed as well. You've got room for a bio. But on the rest of the page, if you look down Christina George's page, she's linked her blog so you can keep up with her latest blog posts. She's got some trailers for the book, so she's added those. Although if you have interviews, those are also a great thing to add. You, of course, see the listing of her books. Right now, she doesn't seem to have any events going on, but for authors who have events, definitely list them on Google Reads. And when you see the updates, you can see that Christina is working on building friends. She's getting involved in different groups. Those are the kinds of things that you want to do. You want to join groups, you want to make friends, you want to do all kinds of things step by step that will increase your exposure on the site. Okay, so so let me let me just stop you there. What does it really take to get traction on Goodreads? So, you know, when you talk about other social media sites, all right, so I know I need to be on Facebook every day, I know I need to be on Twitter every day, I need to be on G Plus every day. Do I have to be on Goodreads every day in order to create engagement? I don't think so. I think you can schedule time even just once a week. I do think you want to sit down and create as complete a profile as you can in the beginning, but then you can just set aside some time to network. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, being involved in groups, I can say from experience that the discussions tend to be somewhat ongoing. You don't have to be there every single day. There are people who like to check in on a regular basis, however, and they, over time, know which discussions they want to be a part of, and they'll just jump in there and get involved. OK. Now, your number one goal on Goodreads should be to get reviews. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely, because the reviews don't just appear on Goodreads. The Goodreads syndicate those reviews. So they can show up on USA Today, and they can show up on all kinds of library-related sites. So you really get some great exposure. OK. Um, so, so all right, so we have this profile. Now, a couple things. So I want to ask you first about groups. How many groups do you think somebody should join? And the groups, i got to tell you, I find the groups particularly tricky to figure out. So I'm a member of a few groups, and I, I, at one point, I had them notify me every time there was a new post, which is a huge mistake, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I when I go in there and I post something, you know, I want to know when somebody. I mean, it's great, you know, if I go in there once a week or whatever, or a couple times a week, and I check and see who's made it, you know, who's created an updated post. But I want to know when somebody specifically responds to me, and that that is particularly difficult at least from my perspective, on Goodreads. Is that, would you agree with that? I do agree I do with that. There's that. no ideal way that they've worked that notification system, because if you turn off email alerts, which I would recommend, the notifications you get within your own Goodreads account will be for every discussion that goes on in every group you belong to. What I would recommend is I do think there are three main giveaway uh, sites. I do I think do that think authors should join those because obviously when they've got giveaways going, those are three places you can definitely promote, but you would turn off any kind of notifications from there. Then I would say maybe start out with two, no more than three groups in your genre or area of interest because I think you're going to find that it'll take a little time to really get familiar with the groups, the types of discussions they have where you can actually become a part of it. So I would say three groups max, because 
some of these groups can get really, really busy. I mean, the Goodreads also authors readers group, one that we do recommend to people, has nearly 15,000 members. So there is a great deal of activity on there, and I think it takes time because you want to start out by just going to the Welcome tab and looking at what the rules are, getting a sense of who some of the members are, and then you'll see in an active group like this, there are a number of separate discussion boards, and you really want to take some time to get familiar with it. And that's why you're not going to want to spend too much time joining too many groups in the beginning. I'd say get to know a couple of and then see if they work for you. If not, you can always drop a group with groups and look for other groups. OK. Yeah, because the, the inclination, of course, when you start is to just sign up for a whole bunch of groups and then you know, figure that you're just doing all this great networking. But it does get overwhelming. And I will say that, that some people, and, and I, I really, we may need to edit this part out, but I really like Goodreads. But there are some people who have an excessive amount of time on their hands and will write emails that are three pages long. And I think it's great, but it, it, if you have too many groups, it becomes a real challenge to keep up with the folks who have more time to post longer emails. I mean, any author that I know who's aggressively marketing their book, you know, they get in, they post something, um, they share something, they respond to something, and then they leave. I mean, have you noticed that too, Paula? That there's kind of like you have this, you have this section of people who just Goodreads is kind of their thing all the time, and then you have this other section where they're they're you know sort of posting and then leaving and. Oh, exactly. Oh, and I tend to be more of a poster and leaver, but because there are only a couple of groups that I'm truly active in, I know where I'm participating in discussions, so I sort of time it on my own schedule. I know. For example, in the Tudor book blog, which book we're reading, where we left off in the last discussion, and I sort of manage it that way. So if there are people who are having tons of long conversations, that's great. But I know where I've been, and I really try to focus on that. And that it, it, it's a little more sane that way. Yeah, yeah, it does get to be a little bit more sane because I found that if I try to get into a discussion, let's say for example around book marketing, right? I, I'm still amazed when I go into a Goodreads group how many people really misunderstand what it takes to market a book. And you'll get, I mean, and that type of discussion tends to be extremely active. And when you get into strings like that, it just becomes really hard to track the conversation. Nor I don't know that you necessarily want to. So I would get in there and give them, you know, what I feel is you know, the best answer. And then somebody may respond to me, but most of it is people just kind of, you know, a lot of people are sort of talking about the lack of promotion and how they're not getting enough reviews and things, and all issues that I understand, but I don't think you should, I think you kind of have to pick your battles within these groups. Oh, I agree. I think you really need to manage where you're posting and also just learn to scan. It does take a little bit of practice, but once you make it a habit, it's really sort of easy then to glance through the areas where you've been active, see if there's something that you really think you should respond to, otherwise you can let it go, move on to the next thing. Yeah. Now, now some of these groups will let you post giveaways. Um, so, let's, so we're going to talk about giveaways in just a second and how to run them. But talk to me about group protocol. So we know that we want to get into a Goodreads group, and we don't want to just be about us. I mean, we want to post an introduction, glad to be here. We want to get in there you know, at least once a week in every group, respond to a question, offer some helpful advice, you know, lead, with, lead with the helping hand first before you say, gimme, 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 I want reviews, I want people to put my book on their shelf, I want this and that. But there is a point when you can actually ask for that, right? I mean, you can ask for reviews, you can ask oh, exactly. for giveaway mentions. At what, what's the protocol around that? Well, that's why it's always great to start with the welcome tab. Even in the giveaway groups, they have their protocol. So the first thing you want to do is see what their rules are. For a group like Goodreads Authors and Readers, they do allow you to plug your book, whether you have a free Kindle download, if you're doing a giveaway on the site. It's actually in Section 7 called Support GR Authors. 
So a lot of these groups do have a sense of self-promotion because they do support authors, they understand that authors need to get themselves out there, they just want to contain it so that discussions can be on a specific topic and yet there can still be a place where everyone can go to see what all the promotions are. Okay, okay. And um, so, so then we've got... Um, so, so you've got the groups, and I want you to mention some groups that you think might be good for folks to join too. Um, but so we've got the groups, we've got the interactions. So, looking at the guidelines, seeing when you can post free stuff or giveaways. There are also groups though that will ask for reviews, right? Or where you can ask for reviews. Is that correct? Oh yeah, and those are typically in the genre groups. So for example, if you have a mystery book and you join some of the mystery and thriller groups, there is typically a thread where authors can indicate that they're seeking reviews. And, and the nice thing about that is obviously you're getting in front of people who already read your genre and those who actually have the time will be the ones who will be looking through that list, which I think is just a better way to ensure that there actually is a review. Because okay. book lovers are terrible in that they end up with far more books than they actually can read. Yeah, 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 and it does become a challenge. And I was part of a group, well, I mean, I, I am part of a group, and I was sort of watching the, the exchange of reviews. And so somebody would post something, hey, would you review my book? And, you know, and it wasn't always, I mean, it, it was a great discussion about I would like to get more reviews for my book, but not every book was requested. I mean, if you look, if you scroll down, as you said, you can kind of see, you know, this isn't just a given. I mean, and I think that the more that you contribute to the groups, the more people will pay attention to you. So, like, oh my gosh, that Paula person, she's always posting helpful stuff. She's got a book out. Let's review that. You know what I mean? Let and, and you may get more requests for that. I mean, is that kind of how how it works? Oh, exactly. I mean. Some of the most active people on Goodreads are really paying attention to what they're doing. And I say to authors, once you become more familiar with who's who and you get active in groups and you are comfortable, it's also appropriate to contact people directly. I mean, I've had people who've actually read my profile, they see the genres I read and they've contacted me to let me know about their book. Sometimes I don't have time, but if it's intriguing enough and they've taken the time to respond to me, at the very least I feel like I can have the book on my bookshelf just to get a little exposure for them. But in some cases I have actually read those books, especially if they've taken the time to see, for example, that I love true crime books and they've written a true crime book and they give me just a nice little plug. It's intriguing. So, so let me just stop you there because this is really interesting. So. How would the how would how would a Goodreads author how would an author pitch somebody like yourself on Goodreads? Because we all this is this is our our little secret no more now. Paula is a voracious reader. I mean, she's reading, and if you follow her on Goodreads and you follow her wherever else, you see that she's always she's always got a book. So obviously, perfect industry for you to be in. But what how would somebody go about pitching somebody who who is who reads in their genre? Well, this is all part of the process of, for example, joining groups and getting familiar with people because another piece of being active on Goodreads is also asking people to be your friend or be your fan. That gives you an opportunity to learn about them as well. I would say this is a process you want to do slowly and carefully because you want to take a good look at somebody's profile, you want to get a sense of how active they are as a player, you want to be clear that they're interested in your genre. And if it looks like a good fit based on the books you see on their shelf, I think it's perfectly appropriate to contact them. You want to keep a very lighthearted pitch, but you want to make a case for why you think your book may interest them based on the fact that they read that genre. And just sort of leave the door open. I think most people are receptive to that. It's not just a blatant promotion done as a call to call. And I think that you've got a chance where some people at the very least are going to read and review the book, and if not, I think there will at least be many who will be willing to add it to their bookshelves, and that's always good exposure too. So, so look for people who review in your genre, um, or look for people actually who have um, who have a lot of books on their bookshelf that are similar to your to yours, uh, and also we want to look for authors or for readers who are actively 
um, who are active on, on Goodreads, who are active reviewers, who, so who have a lot of reviews posted, right? And then you can, you can send them an email and say, hey, you know, um, I noticed that you like whatever, contemporary romance, and look, I have this book. Would you be interested in, in possibly reviewing it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, just let them know about your book. Um, it's also something to think about if you've got a giveaway going. You can always let them know that the giveaway is also underway. Okay. Like I said, I've been contacted a few times by people who've actually taken the time though to, to look at what's in my profile and what I'm doing. They all see I do the Goodreads Reading Challenge, so they know that I am reading books on a regular basis, and that I'm even trying to be reading more. So I think they see, well, they've got to lose because I'm interested in their genre to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's fantastic. All right. So so give us some a couple more names of, of some groups that people, that you think people should join. Um, Goodreads Authors Readers is one of them. What else? There's Goodreads, There's Goodreads Making, Making Connections, Connections. Okay. which is a really, good, a really one. good one. There's another There's one called Book Haven. And there's also the Goodreads Reviewers Group. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Now, what's what's that? The Reviewers Group is actually a, a good place to try to seek reviews. I mean, again, it's always tough because avid readers are their own worst enemy. But it is a group that is trying to bring reviewers and authors together. So it's got an open membership. And it's an opportunity, again, to try to get your book in front of people who are looking for books to review. So you can let people know about your book. They even have um, a genre thread, so you can just add your book under the appropriate genre for people who like to search that way. Under their author's thread, however, you can let people know that your book is available for review. Okay. And they, and they also they do some fun activities like link reads and things like that as well. Okay, that's great. Um, so, all right, so we have the groups, um, we have our profile. It's pretty easy, I think, to link. You know, you can you can add your YouTube videos pretty easily when you have a when you have a, a you know when you have a, a book trailer. You can add your blog, which is pretty easy to do. You can also add your Twitter account, correct? That is correct. So, if you've got a Twitter feed, you might as well just get it listed. To make it easy for people to find you. Okay, good. All right, so we've got the um, so we so we've got the Twitter feed, we've got the we've got the, the profile set up, um, and talk to me a little bit about the Goodreads giveaway. Now, I had a call this morning with somebody, and he said, "I don't like the Goodreads giveaway. I get nothing out of that." And to me, that's maybe not maybe they're not using the giveaway correctly. I mean, what what are your what's your take on, on doing the Goodreads giveaway? Well, I think that you absolutely get something out of it because first and foremost it's exposure for your book. But if you simply post a giveaway when they have hundreds of giveaways going on at the same time, you're not going to get as much out of it as you could because the, the very first step is posting your book and making it available for a giveaway, which, by the way, is a review process. When you try to enter a giveaway, Goodreads reviews that request first. And they send you an email link. You have to click that very link. Then they will review your request. So it can take them up to two business days, depending on how busy they are. But it's important to point out, because sometimes I've had to tell authors that the reason their giveaway isn't live is because they never clicked on that verification link. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. So okay. that's just one of those little things people should know about. But once you give them the button, there is a widget they provide you with that you can put on your own site. You certainly want to use all the, group, the, the uh, Goodreads groups that you can to let people know about the giveaway. And if you're active on other social media, use that also to promote the giveaway. Put it on your blog, and if your blog runs through Goodreads, even better because then it's sort of uh, double exposure. But you do want to get out there and let people know that your book is now part of a giveaway. Okay. Now, the other thing that I would recommend with regards to the giveaway is that, and this is something that I've done before, is I will go in and thank people. So I'll go in and notify people that the book is on the way. And then 
you know, once I know that they have the book, just verify, look, did you get a copy of the book? I hope you enjoyed it. I'd really love to get your feedback. So I'm not really saying, hi, you got my free book, now please review it. But what I am telling them is, I'd really like to know what you think. And that kind of, I mean, do you think that that, what do you think about doing that, Paula? Oh, I think that's a terrific oh, I that's idea. A terrific I idea. think it's a very unpressured way to contact those winners. And it's also, of course, not to not only congratulate them, but let them know when the book is in the mail. People really appreciate that. But when you ask people for feedback, you're essentially asking for a review, but in a very laid-back kind of a way. And, and I think people appreciate that, and I think people like knowing that their opinion matters. Right. Right, exactly. And, and in most cases, when I've done that, I've gotten feedback from people saying, oh, wow, yeah, I got the book. I'm really excited. In fact, we had one book. In fact, I think it's this one where it was a two, it was part of a series, and the gal said, oh, my gosh, I, I won the second book. Now I'm going to go out and buy the first one. So, you know, there's an element of, of there's an element of surprise when you do that kind of, when you, when you connect with people that way, too. There really is. And I mean, Goodreads, I mean, Goodreads is, is a social networking network site for book lovers. Right. So these so are people who really want to discover books, books, they want to discover authors. They don't want to feel pressured about it because it's typically something they do for pleasure. But with the right touch, it's a great way to increase your exposure, to increase your fan base. And these are people that hopefully will stick around for all of your books. Right, 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 exactly. Now, one of the things that I, I do recommend that authors do is try to do a, try to do a giveaway before the book comes out to create some early interest in it, and then do one, you know, after the book is out. I mean, do, do you think that's a good? I do. I think that is a really good good way to go about it because. You, you know, there are so many people that are active on Goodreads that you really want to do a giveaway more than once, and it's nice to be able to do it before the book officially comes out, and it does help, I think, give it a little boost. And then you give the little book, you know, time out there and schedule another one, and you'll probably hit up a lot of different people at that point, but again, it's just increased exposure. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great, that is a great idea. Um, so, recommendations on... Um, the type of giveaway. Now you can do a giveaway that is just in the US and then you can do a giveaway worldwide. We typically do them worldwide, do we not? I think there's a lot of benefit to worldwide if people are, are willing to do that simply because again you get even more exposure. I mean Goodreads does have a lot of members who live in the United States but they have a, a good number of overseas members as well. So I would say take advantage of every possible opportunity you can have to get exposure for your book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number of copies, number of number of copies that you should be uh, giving away. What what's your recommendation? Well, since well, you will be really mailing print, print copies, I mean, I do think people want to just consider that. I think ten is a great number to start with. If people could do more than that, terrific. But I think ten copies is is a good number. Right, right, right. I had an author one time tell me that she did fifty copies, and she said that was a little that was a little out of control. Um, it was a little, it was a little tricky. So, I think that the, I think ten copies is a pretty good. And you, you can also do it. I mean, how frequently can you do a giveaway on Goodreads? You can you pretty much do them as often as you like. I mean, once your first giveaway has ended, you can put in a request for another one. It has to be officially over. But once it's over, you can schedule one right away. I think typically it doesn't hurt to wait because hopefully you are making some time on Goodreads, continuing to build your contacts, gain more fans, etc. So if you give that a little time between giveaways, you'll have a bigger fan base to start with. Okay. All right. That's great. And what else? So what? What else are we missing? What else have we not talked about in regards to Goodreads? So we we have the profile, we know the groups, we know the giveaways. Well, one thing to consider is Goodreads advertising. They have a pay-per-click program, so you can control the cost pretty well. It is a great way for to get exposure, especially if you've already got a giveaway going. And let's say you do the giveaway for at least 30 days, which gives your book plenty of time to get some exposure. And also for an advertising program, provides enough time to kind of get the word out there. And you don't have to do anything really uh, 
really detailed. I mean, you could basically maybe have something that says enter to win with a, a picture of your book cover and a link to the giveaway uh, or get your free book. So you can keep it pretty simple. The nice thing about the ad program is they really do walk you through the steps. It's actually one of the easier pieces of Goodreads to navigate once you decide you'd like to run an ad. In terms of price point, it's, it's pay per click, so it's like 10 cents to 50 cents per click. And you can just play around with it and see what you want to do. And you know, I'll tell you something, just a little secret, because I know that we do the Goodreads ads here. Um, there, you can do these ads and have some surprisingly big impact for 10 bucks. I mean, you would be amazed at what you can do as opposed to some of the other, like if you're advertising on Twitter or you're advertising on Facebook, you know, $10 basically gets you nowhere. But on Goodreads, your money really goes a long way. It really does, and they really try to help you figure out how to get in front of your audience. Like I said, that's a very user piece of Goodreads. Uh, I suspect they probably did a lot of testing on it, and they wanted it to be as easy as possible for people to place ads. So they make a lot of suggestions to you, and if you feel like your ad maybe isn't doing what you want it to do, you can jump back in, and you can get additional suggestions if you want to make some tweaks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great. And how long? So, so give me. Do you have any kind of a sense of how long is long enough to run the ads? So, to support the giveaway, you want to run the ads. Do you want to do it the entire giveaway? Do you want to do it just for a couple of days? I mean, what's what's the recommendation? And I also want to ask you, how long do giveaways typically last on Goodreads? Well, you can set how long you'd like the giveaway to last. I think a 30-day giveaway is is really nice. But if you just want to get your feet wet, I think one week is, is a fine way to get a sense of what's out there and how the giveaway works. If you're only doing a week, you could, you, you could just run the ad for a couple of days. If you're going for 30 days, though, you might want to consider letting your ad run a little bit longer just to get more exposure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, I think that running that for... Um, yeah, I think that running that for... Um, 30 days is a, is a great. That's a that's a that's a great idea. That's usually what we do, right? Uh, well, for a lot of our authors, we tend to get their feet wet, so we we do it for about a week because they're still learning the system and they're still very new. They haven't had a lot of opportunity to really get active yet. So it's really just a way to sort of whet their appetite and show them what Goodreads is capable of. And then we recommend that they go for a longer giveaway after they've had some time to build more following and become familiar with how the site works. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. So what else do we need to know about Goodreads? Well, you know, there are easy ways to be active on Goodreads on a regular basis. In the beginning, if the groups seem a little overwhelming, you can also focus on things like adding a book to your shelves. I mean, obviously, you want people to see your own books, but we're hoping as an author that you're also a reader. And it's another way that you can connect with potential fans by listing the books that you read because that often attracts people who like the same books. Okay. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you don't have to work that hard to gain new friends or fans because people see what you're putting on your bookshelf and that attracts them to you. So, so okay, so the, now here's the one thing that I know about, um, that I know about the review stuff. When I was I was when I was a digital book world, um, there was a there was a panel about you know social social sites for for authors and Goodreads obviously was one of them, and they talked about the app. So the app on Goodreads, so Goodreads gets a ton of its traffic mobile, right? Mm -hmm. um, the app is great if you have the app. So adding books to your shelf. So if you can <clears throat> at least once a week look. I don't know. I mean most of us are trying to write our next book, so we don't always have time to review books. But if you can review a book, I mean, I think maybe once a month, and then if you have a stack of books like at home that you can add to your shelf, you can use, and I keep waving my phone for a reason, but you can use your app to actually um, scan the barcode of the book, and it scans it right onto your shelf. Yeah, so, it's a really nice tool. Yeah. So it's a nice tool, and I really recommend, I mean, if you can at least once a week, you know, you don't even have to write a review. Scan some books, star them. And one of the things that I've done, and I've, done, I've coached this with authors too, is I'll tell them, look, go back through some of your older books. They don't all have to be 2014 or 2013 books. They can be, you know, a few years old. I have a friend of mine who's just now sitting down 
with all of Dan's, Dan Brown's books, right? She's a little late to the party, but she said, you know, I just, I finally got around to, you know, this is the genre that I wanted to read. And so she's getting on Goodreads, and she's now starting to post this stuff. And, you know, I don't know an author in the world. Um, I would be extremely flattered if somebody reviewed one of my books, even if it was, you know, from, you know, a few years ago. So, I, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that, or, or am I missing something? Oh, no, I think no, that's, I think that's fine. fine. And, and the truth is, people are going to find out if books at different times in different ways and I think the key is just making your books available so that people can find them. Okay, all right, I think that's great. So um, just, you know, keeping the activity going, so let's just go through some of the power user steps for, for Goodreads. So obviously you want to get your profile up there, your blog, um, your Twitter feed, your video if you have one, and go to the groups, try and answer a question or post something really helpful once a week to each group and try to post, you know, put a new book on your shelf. So you want to show a little shelf activity. So put a new book on your shelf and then if you can, write a review once a month and star, you know, one or maybe a few books once a week. Would you say that's, um, would you say that's, that's about right? Yeah, I think that's great, and I know sometimes writing a review tends to be a little bit more time intensive, but if you could at least start out by rating books, giving them stars, that's definitely a good way to get things going. And again, I think it just creates a good feeling for people who come to your page who see that this is an author who's not just looking for something from other people, but is actually an avid reader who cares about books and is taking the time to read and review and and uh, support other support books too. Other books too. Right, right, right. And you know what? And also just write, and not every review has to be, you know, five star, right? So if you look at like Christina George's reviews here, um, you know, too good to be true. And you know, when we know, when we look at her profile, we know that she happens to like this author. This book didn't quite sit right with her. She gave, you know, people are more inclined to follow somebody who's not just, oh, I love everything, right? Because, exactly. because, you know, not every author, I mean, let's face it, we all want to hit it out of the park with every book that we write. Kristen Higgins, who is extremely nice, I've met her in person, she writes really, really fun contemporary romance. Um, you know, she's, she's not perfect. Not everybody's going to hit out of the park. You need to be able to write, you know, constructive reviews. Don't, you know, don't get on there and start writing, you know, really negative stuff. I mean, I would, I, I'm never a fan of that, but I think that writing really helpful reviews like here's where I thought the author could have done better or I would have liked to see more character development here. To me when I get those kinds of reviews those are actually really helpful to me, right? Um, so I think and people are more inclined to follow you if you are constructive as opposed to hearts and flowers all the time, right? Exactly. I think it just lends to credibility because it shows that you also read critically. Uh, you can certainly review a book and be honest and not tear anybody apart or insult them, but just simply indicate what worked for you, and if there was something that didn't work, you indicate what that is as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you think that, now we understand that we're talking about activity here on Goodreads, but do you think that um, being a reviewer as well as just being a writer, do you think that that is a, a, maybe a, mis a crucial missing piece for a lot of authors who are on Goodreads trying to figure out how to make it work? Yeah, I think a lot of authors allow it to be too much of a one-way street where they're always looking for something and they're not really giving back. And it's that, like Goodreads really works best when people are willing to be a part of the site and really participate in it. And so that would mean reading and reviewing books, being part of groups, maybe joining some of the challenges. Yeah, yeah, I think. And the, the challenges are really fun because some of the groups will post the stuff and they'll post even like round robin discussions like you guys, I know you guys obviously you talk about books, but some of the groups will get into, like I'm a member of some of the how to promote on Amazon groups and that kind of stuff, is they'll pick a day and they'll say, give us your best tip on such and such. And some of the tips on there are really awesome, you know. So they're also fun just to kind of get to know these people as opposed to, you know, just posting and ditching. Exactly. I mean, 
granted we're all pressed for time, but I do think that you can just set aside a little block of time and then sort of split it into segments where maybe you're scanning to see where you can jump in. But again, making it a two-way street, so it's not just you constantly looking for reviews or for people to join your giveaway or what have you, but that you are actually providing some value back to the site. Yeah, absolutely. So so one final thing that I want to leave everybody with is, is this whole time element. And Paula, you just addressed this too, where you said, you know, look, we're all pressed for time. I, I would recommend, if nothing else, spend an hour a week on Goodreads, right? And if you have to, divide it up into 15 or 10 minute blocks of time, right? Because if you if you chunk it down, you know, so let's say, okay, today I'm going to get on there and I'm going to, you know, pick some more books and add them to my shelf. And really kind of define your priorities as opposed to just getting on there in some sort of scattershot fashion and, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to check this, I'm going to check that. And we're all, you know, I've done it. This is why I, you know, those who can't do teach, right? <laughs> right? But I mean, do you think do you think that an hour is enough? Um, yeah, yeah, I think in the beginning it will probably feel awkward because you don't know the site, but it's like anything that you're doing for the first time. I think limiting yourself actually helps you preserve your sanity and probably will help you not to be discouraged because you will be very focused in the time that you give it. If you don't accomplish everything you want those first few times, that's fine. You will become more efficient as you get to know the site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that with anything, if you can create just kind of a focused roadmap, okay, today I'm doing this and tomorrow I'm doing that, and tomorrow, you know, then you kind of know, you know, it, then you can you can really accurately measure whether a certain and this is for Goodreads or any other site whether the site is really actually working for you because you're taking a, a you know. You're taking a set of actions that you're doing over and over again, and you know you're you really kind of you have a way to measure it. You have a way to see if, if you're successful on it or not. Most, you know, I mean, the numbers that are pretty staggering for people who start social media accounts, regardless of the site, and just don't return to them. So it's kind of like joining Goodread, you know, Goodreads groups. Only put on your plate what you feel you can eat. I feel like I'm my mother now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Like, don't take any more than you can eat, right? But but it's it's really true, right? I mean, we kind of we sort of heap all this extra stuff on, and then we don't have the time, and we get discouraged, and we're like, oh, this is just not working. Nothing's working. Yeah, I yeah, think we're better off so managing our time really tightly, tightly and learning to get more efficient, as opposed to spending hours and then just wanting to smack your head against the keyboard and give up. Right, exactly. Which a lot of people, which I know a lot of people do. And like I said, I tried. I was talking to the guy this morning, and I hope he's I hope he's listening because I think that Goodreads, when used effectively, can really help you to push your, you know, to, to push your career forward. So, Paula, I want to thank you so much for um, for 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 sharing this presentation today. Is there anything else that you that I didn't address that you want to to leave us with? There's just There's one just little thing, thing because a lot of authors seem to not understand this. When you are in your Goodreads author page, I believe you would, you can hit the home that's at the top there in the middle. Then you see your author dashboard. So if you need to look something up, you can go to your dashboard and you can look at your stats. There are author tutorials. There are widgets. Uh, you can see what's going on with your blog, if you have a giveaway going on, or if there's one that's, uh, as you can see, there have already been some from Christina's book. She looks back at the early stats. This is a, a way to keep up with some of the key elements of your profile. And so knowing how to get to your dashboard is a really important piece of Goodreads. Yeah, that dashboard is really helpful. And hitting that, you know, going to that dashboard once a week will really help you to kind of figure out what's gone on with your account while you've been, you know, in between the times that you've checked it. Exactly. And they do have the tutorials as well, so that's another opportunity to learn more. And it may be that you'll want to look at it a couple of times as you become more familiar with the site and then things will start to click and make much more sense. That's excellent. Well, listen, thank you so much for doing this Hangout with me. This was awesome. Um, we are going to be, uh, we're going to be sharing this in our, in our newsletter, I'm sure, and, uh, on a bunch of other sites. So I really appreciate this. We love Goodreads, um, and I hope that more authors are feeling that more you know, comfortable about being on the site and doing some great promotion. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's a really great site. It's definitely worth being a part of. 
Paula, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate your help in putting this together, and um, we'll do another Hangout soon. Great. Sounds, Great. Good. Sounds good.